Welcome to Via Mystica and thank you for being interested in this episode 3. And we're gonna talk about the dangers of fanatic belief on the treaties of darkness. So before that, please do like, share, and subscribe. And if you're having trouble in your prayer life, you could I'm the guy for you. I'm the right guy for you. So in my Catholic life coaching, prayer life management, I'm gonna help you to manage your prayer life. To 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 adv- to to increase in you piety and to help you in your in your advancement towards vocal prayer, mental prayer, and in your spiritual life. So to start with, we have a knowledge about the treatise of darkness. It's the that uh, the world will be enveloped by uh by a, a great darkness wherein this the the Air will be filled by demons, and those who are outside will die, except for those people who will be converted. And only blessed candles will light, and we need to prepare for that. I mean, and we need the we need to prepare food like that, so on and so forth. But the problem is that because many people doesn't have doesn't understand doesn't have an understanding or knowledge on how to approach. Uh, end times prophecy, they tend to have a fanatical belief. Like, they they hoard blessed candles, salts, blessed, uh, blessed salt, blessed oil, they hoard, hoard foods, they become fanatics. So, to, so to speak, that they may, that they may think that any time that the three days of darkness will come, that affects their life. We call we call this in a secular terms preppers. So I'm gonna integrate Catholic preppers. These preppers, these are people who prepare for the end of times. Either it can be a nuclear or a fallout, zombie apocalypse, so on and so forth. So these Catholic preppers, uh, they prepare for the three days of darkness. So why is that dangerous? I mean, why is that fanatical belief towards Catholic the uh, Catholic end times prophecy is dangerous? I pr- I propose two things. First, it uh, it is fear mongering. It 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 endures and promotes unnecessary fear. What do you say unnecessary fear? Because people may tend to think that any time in their life they could uh, the tedious darkness will happen. So that's why they need to prepare and to hoard things that affects their daily life. It affects their prayer life. It affects their 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 social life. Their work life. Because they, uh, they do not, they do not have that uh, certainty or security in terms of the treaties of darkness. One thing I know, as I remember, uh, I heard it from a from a person. I forgot when we discussing about treaties of darkness that uh, the our guardian angel will warn us about the treaties of darkness, especially those faithful Catholics and those who are in the state of grace. I think. In my opinion, God will grant that or the Blessed Mother will obtain that grace for us to be prepared before the tears of darkness will happen. Personally, I do believe in the tears of darkness. However, it must not create in us unnecessary fears that it affects our state of life. Second is that the mis- uh, interpretation interpreter misinterpretation of the prophecy what do what do i mean by misinterpretation of the prophecy many think that it's only for divine punishment but this prophecy is calling uh, calling us to a deeper love with god of course holy fear is a start is the step for a deeper union with god that's why God always asks us to change so that He will not punish us. So, God is calling us to a deeper love. And remember, we must prepare for our death, for our very own end times. Because, because it, will, uh, it may happen that our death will come first before the three days of darkness. And of course, that will be unfor- unfortunate if we spend our life... Uh, Having these unnecessary fears that affected our state of life rather than to be a good husband, a good wife, a good children, a good Catholic, people tend to 
uh, focus more on this private revelations, on this end times private revelation. Um, one advice in terms of uh, approaching uh, end times prophecies or dooms, the uh, prophecy that associate with uh, destruction, for example, World War Three, um, or punishment of a country, famine, famine, war, plague, plague, famine, war, like that, is to first do not panic. I mean, do not have do not have that that unnecessary fear. Second is that even though you you hear these prophecies. You need to have a trust more in the Lord, and do not go, do not go out and buy and hoard things, because the Lord provides. The Lord provides, the Lord gives. So it is important that we have a great trust in our Lord, a great confidence, and pray, pray a lot, pray a lot, and do not believe right away. Do not believe right away about the the prophecy, as if it it is from it is. A, an exact or accurate things will happen. Remember, in, ter in terms of mystical experiences or private revelations, the, the, the essence there is the mystery. It's a secret. It is hidden. It has a, a certain aspect that we need to understand that it is it may not happen soon or it may not happen at a certain time. But it is a warning for us. So we must have this kind of prudence in terms of believing and understanding private revelations. Because the one thing that, in my experience, one problem of prayer groups is that they put much excessive uh, amount of trust in private revelations. And sometimes that they do not understand, even though they do not understand the private revelation, they think they understand it. And sometimes the private revelation mislead the person in terms of Catholic faith. They still believe in it because it is from a servant of God or a holy person. I, I will talk about that next time, that the saints are not infallible. Even 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 the writings of Saint Catherine em uh, Emmerich is unfortunately not that reliable. Why? For the reason that it is not first hand. It is not an autobiography, but it was written by someone, and there was an uh, allegation that uh, the author uh, the author puts I don't know the author sorry the 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 writer puts some of his idea towards the the idea of Blessed Catherine Emmerich. Uh, Blessed Catherine Emmerich was not raised to the altars because uh, of her works, but because she is holy. So remember that. And we're going to talk about that in the next chapter, in the next podcast about uh, the, uh, the danger of, or not the danger, but the saints are not... Uh, in terms of private revelation, we should not uh, make holiness or sainthood or, or sainthood, the status of sainthood as a proof of of authenticity, authenticity or authority, authenticity and authority. It doesn't mean that the the it has sainthood in its mark. It is a saint. The the work are purely authentic and and as authority, especially in private revelation. I'm going to focus in private revelation. Okay, I'm going to focus in private revelation because uh, theological works that are approved by the church has bearing. But I will, I will give, I will give uh, the words of Cardinal Petra about private revelations that he, uh, he said that even an approved private revelation, if it's contrary to the faith, it must be avoided. That's why I made a, 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 a story, I know, a video on the Barnabas Noe. Because even if it's, it's approved by the local ordinary, it still contains error. 
Anyways, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and God bless you.